For these $300 million cruise ships, this is the end of the line. Because of the pandemic, Carnival, Costa, and Pullmanter cruise lines have all sent ships to Western Turkey for demolition. Here, they'll be ripped to shreds deck by deck and sold for parts. But dismantling a ship that holds 2,000 passengers, well, that's... One of the most dangerous jobs in the world. Shipbreakers saw off massive sections of the hull and moved them overhead. There's millions of dollars worth of parts at stake, but any misstep could mean injury or hurting the environment. And it's only gotten harder, with lots of new arrivals. We take you inside the yard, turning these floating hotels into this. Before the pandemic, the Aliaga shipbreaking yards were pretty quiet. Normally, the 22 yards only demolished a few dozen cargo ships a year. But when the pandemic wrecked the cruising industry, more and more cruise ships ended up here. After losing more than $4 billion in the second quarter of 2020, Carnival Cruise Line decided it was more affordable to sell its old ships for parts than try to keep them operating. Aliaga will be the last stop for Carnival's inspiration, imagination, and fantasy ships. Şu arkamda görmüş olduğunuz e, kruz gemileri özellikle belki bir 5 yıl 10 yıl daha kadar çalışabilirdi. Yaklaşık 5 yıl 10 yıllar çalışacak çalışabilecek durumda olan gemilerini Alaya gönderdiler. Captains navigate the cruise liners from the US, UK and Italy. They coordinate with the harbor master to beat ships. Then the bow front of the vessel is grounded on the shore while the stern is still afloat. We plan how we cut the vessels together with our technical department. Then 2,500 shipbreakers set out to remove any valuable material. There are very expensive navigational equipments at breach site. Working one deck at a time, crews take out all the furniture, mostly by hand. We're talking everything from chairs, tables, and pianos to light fixtures and beds. I can easily say that uh, cruise vessels are the hardest vessel type to dismantle because, you know, there are hundreds of rooms on board. Then they move on to amenities, dismantling gyms, pools, and theaters. Stripping walls, windows, floors, and handrails is next. This is where lots of saws and blow torches come in. Workers risk daily falling from great heights, inhaling toxic gases during cutting operations, being hit by falling objects, and the blowtorch comes with fire hazards. They are working in very high degrees under the sun in summer times, or they are working in, in very extreme conditions in winter time. Bu iş e, İlo'yu biliyorsunuz. E, İlo'nun e, listesine göre dünyanın en zorlu işi. Since October 2020, two workers have died from falling objects. The vessel lies on water, so there is no any way for the ambulance to reach in case of emergency situations. Despite these injuries, working conditions in Aliaga are better than those of the world's biggest shipbreaking yards. In South Asia, in Bangladesh, India and Pakistan, where most of the end-of-life vessels end up every year, dozens of people die or get injured in the process. Those yards in South Asia use the dangerous gravity method. That is dropping huge blocks into the water onto the beach. But in Turkey, workers lift ship parts with a massive crane. Which has a 2,000 ton capacity in our shore site. And we cut big blocks at the vessel. And by using this huge crane, we take these big blocks at our secondary cutting zone. Aliaga hasn't always had the safest yards. In the late 90s, Turkey was just as bad as South Asia. But in 2002, Greenpeace released a report that revealed the unsafe work conditions here and the world took notice. As a reaction to this international criticism, things have, have improved considerably. Things got even safer in 2018, when some Aliaga yards started complying with the European Union shipbreaking regulation. That's why Carnival chose two yards here for its end-of-life ships. Six firma Avrupa Birliği kriterleriyle ilgili e, sertifika lisansları e, var bunların. Those EU guidelines have also raised the standards for environmental practices. Every cruise ship has dozens of toxins hidden inside. Things like asbestos in pipes, heavy metals in paints, biological hazards from sewage tanks, radioactive material from gauges, and the list goes on. Left unchecked, they can seep into the soil, beach, and water, where they've destroyed local marine habitats and water systems around shipbreaking yards before. But because of these new regulations, 
Aliaga got newer and better drainage systems and cement floors in the secondary cutting area, so workers weren't cutting ship parts on open beach. They also got new oil booms for containing oil spills, a new waste management center for properly disposing of those toxins in the ship, and a better asbestos removal process. Practices have been improved, but there are still concerns related to the long-term impact on the health of the workers due to exposure to toxic substances. Nicola says many workers aren't aware of these risks, and the rest choose the job anyway because of the high pay. After the ship is demolished, this is all that's left. While the whole process takes six months for a cargo ship, it takes a lot longer for a cruise ship. Almost one year, maybe more. Workers move everything pulled off the ships into separate piles electronics, light fixtures, textiles, furniture, glass, and machinery. Buyers interested in cruise memorabilia claim the life jackets, art, and maps from antique sellers. But what about all that metal? Şimdi tabii bu gemiler burada sökülüyor. Sökülürken de bu malzemeler yeni foçada Bunların tamamı burada kesilen demir metal kısmı tekrar geri dönüştürülüp inşaat demiri vesaire demiri malzeme haline geliyor. In 2020, Omel estimates workers pulled over a million tons of steel off cruise ships here, and that'll all be recycled. Recycling steel instead of mining the raw materials reduces definitely energy requirements and, and the carbon footprint. Bu demiri madenlerden çıkartmak için mesela şu arkamda gördüğünüz gemi yaklaşık 30 bin ton. 30 bin ton demiri madenden çıkartmak için ne kadar büyük bir insan gücü, ne kadar büyük bir ticari yatırım gerektirdiğini düşünürsek bunun çöpe gitmesi ya da hani yok olup heba olup gitmesi dense biz burada onları alıp tekrar ekonomiye kazandırıyoruz. It's estimated scrap metal from one ship could pull in around 4 million dollars in profit for the shipwrecking association. You can make good money because there are lots of things on board for second and sales. Demolishing these bigger ships has led to larger profits and a growing workforce for Aliaga shipyards. Sadece de pandemiden sonra e, kuruz gemilerinin buraya gelip e, bizim kapasitemize e, %30 bir artı sağladı. But as shipwrecking booms, it comes on the heels of a crumbling cruise industry.